terrific. Thank you. All right. Hello, Blue Waves families, uh, residents of Riverhead Central School District. I'm Dr. Augustine Tornatore, your superintendent of schools. And along with me uh, is Ms. Faith, Ms. Faith, Faith Calioni, who is our um, uh, interim assistant superintendent for uh, finance and operations. And we have Ms. Daniela Perez, who is also available to uh, perform translations in Spanish. Um, and so um, what will happen is as we go through the presentation, uh, Ms. Perez will be working with um, any uh, members who have questions in Spanish and she'll be able to respond accordingly. So we're going to pause a minute so Ms. Perez is able to uh, share that in Spanish and then we'll begin the presentation. Buenas tardes, familia de Riverhead Blue Waves. El que está hablando es el doctor Tonatori. Él va a estar dirigiendo la presentación del día de hoy junto con la señora Caglioni. Eh, yo voy a estar traduciéndoles para las familias que necesiten escuchar esta presentación en español. Okay, thank you very much. And I would also thank uh, Mr. Hines uh, for setting all this up for us. So we're going to begin our budget talk presentation. Thank you, Dr. Tornatori. Um, I'd also like to thank the Board of Education and the community and all the, the um, district administrators and staff for all um, the input they had into preparing this year's budget. Um, this year, our um, the main goal was to provide a substantial budget that provide that met the needs of the district and addressed all the, also the um, financial needs of the taxpayers as well. So I'm gonna share my screen now for, share screen. Okay. So tonight, we're gonna, today we're gonna go over the board adopted 2022-2023 budget. Everybody can see it? Yes. Okay. All right. I have to click that high. Okay. Um, one of the first things we're going to review is what is in our budget this year. When we initially started our budget for for the for the 2022-2023 year, we wanted to maintain all the programs and the wonderful things that the district had, had already begun um, improving on and, and sustaining in the 21-22 school year. So we maintained all our covered and pro program as well as improving on, uh, improving on all the programs for the next year. And uh, some things uh, as example are, we do have our half day and full day uh, universal pre-K program. Uh, additionally, we have a very robust program for our elementary students as they transition to Pulaski the middle school and then into the high school. Um, additionally, we work with the uh, ROTC. We have uh, a very robust CTE program through BOCES where students are able to uh, find, refine their vocational skills. Um, and additionally, we have a tremendous amount of courses available and options for our students uh, who are seeking to further their education, whether they want to go into the workforce, go into the military, or uh, go on to college for higher education. Thank you, Dr. Do we need to stop to translate at what point? We're good? Okay. Um, one of the, one of the, um, one of the main improvements that we're going to be adding to next year's budget would be the nine period day at the high school and the middle school. The budget includes staffing and supplies for, for this expanded program. Um, staffing would include 19 additional FTEs, as well as all the supplies that um, the administrators have reviewed and recommended that they would need to um, bring this program to fruition. Dr. Tontori, would you like to? Sure. So uh, one thing that we know is uh, looking through research, um, a nine period day tends to provide more opportunities for students. Uh, it provides a more robust program for students. We're really looking uh, to have Riverhead enter this restoration phase. Um, many years ago, there was a nine period day. It was uh, reduced to eight periods due to budget cuts. But by this restoration, we will be able to have more um, coursework available for students. We will, we will additionally be able to have smaller class sizes. Uh, and again, research does show the importance of the nine period day 
and this will provide more opportunities for our students at the middle school and the high school. Thank you. In addition to the nine period day, um, the district is going to be locating the administrative offices, the current um, district offices, to a different facility to allow um, eight additional classrooms on, on the high school campus. This will um, involve reloc um, the PPE um, di district department will, will be housed where district office is right now and the eight additional classrooms will be right next to the high school. Um, so uh, for any uh, residents that uh, um, know history regarding the district, uh, at one time where the current uh, PPS building is located, there were classrooms uh, for students um, that had shifted to the PPS uh, building location. We are reverting back uh, that building to have those additional classes which will again provide more space for our students at the high school. It was the quickest and the uh, most uh, cost-effective measure to be able to provide this classroom space um, as soon as possible for students. One thing that I heard when I came here as superintendent uh, was the need for additional classroom space. We were able to negotiate uh, a very uh, fair uh, rental um, on Harrison Avenue, so we will still be located closely towards the high school, middle school, and uh, Pulaski. Uh, but by us going to this space, we now have this opportunity for more teaching and learning uh, for our students at the high school um, by having this additional space. Um, throughout, throughout our discussions with administrators um, at, at the district, one thing that um, resonated throughout all the discussions was the the desire to give students um, chances to to more create more creativity and and just expand their their overall experience with hands on projects. Um, we we are creating maker spaces throughout the buildings, the K through twelve program. Um, Dr. Tornatori, would you like to expand a little more on that? Absolutely. So maker spaces are opportunities for students in all grade levels to use their skills in problem solving and use their creativity. Uh, this is certainly something which provides, again, more opportunities for our students. So by having these maker spaces in all seven buildings, number one, we're providing the equity with all seven buildings in the district. And number two, we're providing these additional learning opportunities for our students and for our staff. Um, and it makes education even more fun for students to engage in that. That along with the funding for the alternative high school, which again is another pathway for our students who are not meeting with success in the current high school experience. This again provides more opportunities for our students. So um, we certainly when looking at the budget and uh, looking at this 1% uh, tax levy, increase. My goal has always been to provide as much as I can for the students of Riverhead, but also take into account the current economic situation that we are in, and certainly taking into account that we wanted to uh, provide a very fair budget uh, for the community. Thank you. And um, part of our budget, technology is is constantly changing and the security related to technology is constantly changing. We have spent quite a bit of um, time discussing with Mr. Hines, our technology director, the needs of the district. We have included substantial funding to increase um, the infrastructure and the, the security related to technology, continuing the one-on-one -on -one initiative for the students and um, really just looking at the whole technology program and, and infrastructure as a whole and trying to do as much as we can to, to continue to keep up with, with all the, um, with, with the ever-changing world of technology, helping to increase our, our um, availability to students as well as um, continue to add infrastructure for the security of our technology program. Absolutely. And, and certainly we understand that we are in an age where um, for students, this is 
the main focus for them. We know that uh, that students always have their cell phones, so we needed to provide these opportunities where we have our um, iPads for our early um, uh, young students, and then we move into our uh, Chromebook devices uh, in the uh, um, from grades three through twelve which again um, is so important for students and for our teachers to be able to open up additional pathways for learning. Um, and behind the scenes, Mr. Hines and his team has been really working diligently so that we can strengthen our technology infrastructure to meet the needs of all of our staff and students. Uh, and additionally, putting in additional security layers and measures uh, to protect the district. Thank you. And one thing we've added this year is a transfer to capital line, which will allow us to take funds from our general fund and bring it over to our capital fund for a security, a security project. Um, by, by building this, this um, funding into our budget and moving it over to our capital fund, it allows us to re receive state aid on this project, which um, we currently have a, um, approximately a 50% state aid ratio. So um, working with our architects and our staffing, we, we would um, hopefully get a return on any monies that we do spend in future years. But the security project is um, really ne a necessity to bring our, bring our school up to date to um, help leverage technology as opposed to um, depending solely on security guards and and, and staffing, well, not solely, we do have cameras and everything now, but to enhance technology so we can, so we can use our personnel in different ways to really, um, to really give us, give us a better, better um, security through district-wide access controls throughout the schools. This project will begin with the middle school and high school, and the hopes is that for access controls, camera upgrades, um, including parking lots and athletics, and then the goal would be that this is a multi-year project that we'll be able to add on um, it, to the to the um, elementary schools in in the future years. Um, Dr. Tornatori, any? So uh, to share additionally, uh, uh, again, security is the most important. Um, we we need to make sure that we provide safety for our students and staff. And with these upgrades, we certainly will be able to have uh, greater access, clearer cameras. Um, the software would allow us to hold more information. Um, and then uh, additionally, with the uh, access control, it does provide us um, to have a greater lens um, when situations do arise uh, to be able to review them and to be able to make decisions uh, based upon these additional security upgrades. So. Uh, to me, security is always vital and important, and we wanted to ensure that this was a part of the budget as well. Thank you. And throughout, like we would discuss throughout our budget preparation um, process, we've met with all directors, administrators throughout the district, and the athletics, fine arts, music programs all have um, expressed what their wants and needs were to help enhance their programs. We built um, as many of those enhancements in, whether it's through requests for additional um, money for equipment lines or additional money for supplies. So every every director is um, has a very um, very vested and and um, um, you know very they're very vested in in their programs, and we, we've done everything we can to help them improve on it. Uh, for the nine period day, there will be um, additional additional offerings regarding the arts and music programs and and we're continuing to to build to build on on all the athletics fine arts and music to really give our children a very well-rounded um education that you know besides math and english and to really give them as many opportunities as possible um while they're here at riverhead schools and uh and additionally we also know too, it's important for children to have a well-rounded education. So in addition to their core coursework, um, having these opportunities for students to engage in the various athletic teams that we have, um, to be engaged in various types of, 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 of opportunities to learn instruments or, or in the choral experiences, 
and for students to be able to express themselves additionally through uh, the arts. It is so important for students to have this well-rounded education and in working with our administrative team, we were able to build into the budget what they felt were so important for the um, needs and the wants for the students. And at the same time, we were also cognizant of having a conservative uh, budget increase. So we weren't able to get everything in. So we have that information that we could take a look at in building additional um, supports for the next several years as well. Uh, but these robust conversations that we had with the administrative team certainly helped as we were building the budget for this year. Charter school funding is um, is a is a part of our budget that we we have to account for every year. We do an analysis each year of what we project our enrollment to be based on current enrollment. Um, so we just that that is these are students in our community, and it's. Um, it's something we just need to make sure that we have fully funded for so we can, you know, make sure we meet, meet the needs of, um, of the charter school as they, as they come up. Dr. Tornatori, we were speaking last week. There, we also do provide um, so things like that we're legally required to, such as textbooks and nursing services. So all these items are reviewed as we go through the budget and we make sure that um, we've adequately funded and are prepared to meet the needs as we're required to for, for the next year. And uh, I would say additionally, uh, we also um, are legally responsible to provide the transportation needs for uh, students who reside within the uh, district to the charter school as well. Uh, and additionally, we have our own transportation fleet. So part of the budget does include the um, maintenance of all of the um, vehicles, um, to be able to uh, support uh, the, um, uh, the transportation portion of the district uh, and to be able to have um, funding so that we are able to have our bus drivers and our team members who are in the transportation office, they're able to map out and uh, provide all of the needs for the students in the district who are attending um, Riverhead and also attending the charter school as well. And as, you, and as Dr. Tornatori just said, um, meeting all the transportation needs of our districts from, from all our students, whether they're from home to school for athletics, for charter schools, um, and, and having our in-house um, transportation department, I think really gives an advantage to the district that um, we were able to respond quickly regarding any situation that arises. We have, um, we have great staff over there from the drivers to the mechanics to, to the directors or working as a team to always try to um, make sure that our students' needs are met. And, and like, as we go through each line by line, as we budget preparation, we wanna make sure we have the funding that they will need to um, continue that level of service. Okay, I'm gonna go. These are a few of the elective courses that will be um, that will be um, added to the high school and middle school as a result of the nine period day and, and discussions with our administrators. Dr. Tornatori, would you like to discuss? Absolutely. Um, this is very exciting to share with the community. Um, if you take a look and see all of these new electives, this came out of conversations between our administrators and our teachers. And so they are extremely excited to be able to um, offer more opportunities for our students. And we wanted to ensure that the electives that we presented were electives that our students really wanted to be able to sign up for. Um, it wasn't just um, our conversations, but uh, really enlisting um, student input as to what they felt would be something of interest for them. Um, and so we are truly excited that um, with this uh, budget, with the 1% tax levy increase, that we would be able to offer this, uh, these additional options for our students. Thank you. We touched on earlier our transfer to capital line that we have um, integrated into our budget. It's a $1.5 million that will be funded through the budget and moved into our capital funds to be used specifically for the purpose of this security capital project. Um, 
it's going to, the project will begin in the, um, in the secondary buildings and hopefully in future years, we'll be able to move on to the primary buildings. The initial project will include upgraded software for all buildings. So we will, um, we will have integrated software, will um, we'll have an immediate impact um, district-wide as far as the, the type of um, footage we're able to get on our cameras and, and all of, and, and things like that. As, but as far as equipment and access control, those will be primarily in the secondary buildings. We'll increase security in parking areas, athletic facilities. Um, door access is gonna be a, a very um, significant change to our district. Right now, um, we have keys out there that, you know, doors that were keyed 20, I don't know how many years ago, but many years ago where the keys are, this will really help security have a good handle on um, everybody that comes in and out of the buildings, what, um, when, when anybody can access the buildings, if doors are opened during the school day, um, we will be, they'll be able to be aware of it. It just really, um, it's a level of technology that um, is, is really needed. It's, you know, something, something that the district, you know, it, it needs to go to the, to this, um, in this direction, the door monitoring, it just will once again, allow us not to um, rely so heavily on personnel, but use technology to, to help, help increase our security and allow us to use our personnel for, um, for different, different, you know, different scenarios throughout, throughout the district. Um, like I said, the software upgrades will be district wide and, and the wall of cameras um, will eventually be upgraded. The plan is also um, our security department and our architects have worked very closely. We don't plan on, um, you know, if we have good technology and certain cameras that, that we, we may have bought in the last few years, we do plan on, you know, making the most and being as efficient as possible with these funds to really get the most out of the money. So if we have cameras that can, can still be used with our upgraded software, we, will re, we won't change those out, but we will just continue to add and improve on what, what we had. And like, like we said, the door access control will allow all staff to have, have um, ID that will um, let administration and security know when anybody enters, leaves a building. Um, and really give us a little, little more control over our district-wide security. Dr. Tornatori, any? Uh, I would just say uh, additionally, um, this certainly also helps uh, when students make uh, a poor choice and decide to elope from a building. So uh, these are mitigating ways in which we could um, have uh, greater control of that to ensure that students are stay safe and retain uh, in the building. Um, and as um, was shared earlier, um, this additional technological tool will really aid our security staff who do a phenomenal job um, so that they are able to circulate in other parts of the building instead of having to be stationed at certain areas uh, where the technology would be able to provide that service moving forward. Thank you. So this is an overview of the 22-23 proposed expenditure budget. Um, the total budget increase is 6.49%. Um, as you can see, the, the majority of the dollar increase is goes directly to instruction. Um, that would be with what falls within instruction is our teaching, our staff, our regular day school, our special ed needs, charter schools, occupational education. Um, that's all within that. The nine, the nine period day, um, the nine period day, the boat special education needs, um, all those are, are um, really make up a large part of our, um, of our additional budget, budget change. And then the undistributed amount, as you see, goes that's that includes our benefits, our debt service, and our interfund transfers. In in the undistributed amount, that includes the 1.5 million that we were just talking about for our security project. So between benefits and the security project, that makes up the majority of that increase. We have some increase in transportation, 
um, that will come from just like we said, meeting the needs of all our students throughout bus drivers, um, administration, if we need, we if we need, you know, fuel costs and anything that goes with the transportation department, and then general support that includes um, staffing at the district office, um, security, uh, security, um, plants and facilities. So all the each each um, each area was looked at very clo closely and thoughtfully. Um, we tried to be as efficient as possible while you know still expanding program primarily in the instruction area to really put our money there and at the same time being very aware of um, keeping a, a reasonable or as low as we could um, tax levy increase. Dr. Tortor? And, um, and additionally, I'll share out that uh, some strategies we've utilized this year to get to that uh, 1%. Um, is that we have researched and uh, applied for as many grants as possible. Um, we were able to secure uh, an additional uh, additional seats with our UPK grant for the full day. Uh, we've applied for an MTSS grant as well. Um, and we will continue to look for um, additional grants as possible uh, so that that would not put the burden on the taxpayers. Uh, we also have a very close relationship with Eastern Suffolk BOCES. So by working through with BOCES and providing services there, we also receive, receive aid back from, uh, from working with BOCES as well. Um, and we also partner with um, SCOPE, Stony Brook um, to offer more opportunities. This summer, uh, as a part of the budget as well, we are looking to partner with Camp Invention so that we could provide STEM activities for our younger students. Um, and um, we will continue to do that. That's something that um, has always been my focus to be able to provide as many opportunities as possible with the lowest amount of cost as possible. Um, so taking a look at the information, uh, again, uh, like was shared, uh, we do see that increase, um, uh, that largest increase is in the instruction code, because again, our focus is to provide as much as we can for the Riverhead students. And this is our proposed revenue budget. Our property tax levy on the first line is a 1% increase. Our state aid, we did get approximately $7.68 million in increase. Um, this increase is, uh, the majority of it is in foundation aid, which is um, a three-tiered, three-year three increase, which began the current year that we were in 2021-22. And then in, increase this year and next year. Basically, this increase, although we're very thankful to all our um, legislators and all our um, co the people that helped get us this additional aid, this is aid that really is bringing us to where we need to be. Um, so, Dr. Tornatori also has has mentioned in 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 um, prior in prior presentations that we're we're kind of like um, restoring what what we needed you know, where we bring us to where we should have been. Um, so this, this money allows us to do that. Um, reserves appropriated fund balance, 1.5 million approximately increase. We're gonna go over that in a little little bit. This, this funding is from um, money that the district already has on hand. There's no tax levy impact when we use these funds. Uh, reserves are set by the New York State as to what types of reserves we can use and for what purposes we can use them. And then um, appropriated fund balance, that is if we um, had efficiencies in this year's budget and under, underspent this year's budget, we appropriate a certain amount of money to offset the tax levy and increase our programs for the following year. Pilots, which are payments in lieu of taxes, those are um, payments we get from they come to us via, via the, the towns. We're part of Brookhaven, Riverhead, and Southampton Town. And those are for um, various organizations that don't pay taxes, but they do pay um, basically payments in lieu of taxes. And those amounts are generally set through the towns and, um, and flow through to us. And we, we do that estimate based, usually right now, we're basing it on what we expect to receive this year as our best estimate for what we will get next year. Tuition, intermunicipal, intermunicipal agreements, 
Um, we have billing for various things, for various services with other districts. Um, if we provide nursing services to um, public schools and there's, there's, I'm sorry, to non nursing, nursing um, services to non-public schools, we have to build back the other districts that also have children in those schools. We also partner with um, some surrounding districts to provide some services regarding transportation and various various items that we might um, agreements we might enter into with surrounding uh, municipalities that we bill for. Reimbursements and refunds, these are miscellaneous and miscellaneous items that we may receive both these refunds um, from prior years. We analyze what we what the trends have been for the last few years and you'll see based on the, my analysis, I do expect that we would receive a little more this year. In, um, in that line item. Interest donations, um, no increase. We do expect that it would be steady, everything combined. Interest might fluctuate, but then so might the miscellaneous items. And other, other aid, this is generally federal aid that might flow through to us for various reasons, whether it be Medicare or um, some kind of reimbursement, but it doesn't fall under our general state aid amount. So all in all, we'll see a 6.49 percentage increase in our revenue budget, which would match our expenditure budget. I also wanted to include on the bottom line, the UPK grant funding that we will, we do receive, we are receiving additional money um, from, from, from the state. This money is not part of our general fund, but um, it does allow us to provide UPK services um, to, to our students. And it's, you know, this, it's very specific in how we can use it. So if we don't use this money specifically for UPK, um, we would not be able to use it for any other purposes. Our um, administration works closely with our, with our building administrators as well as surrounding um, agencies to provide as many, many um, openings for, for universal pre-K as we can to all our students. Dr. Tornatory? Sure. Um, additionally, um, I want to um, add on um, that, again, I personally am so appreciative to our local uh, level, county level, and um, state level um, legislative members who have fought to be able to provide more of the foundation aid to Riverhead, which was much deserved. Um, additionally, I've had um, meetings with all three town executives uh, who have been very supportive of the district. Uh, and I want to thank them as well. By all of us partnering together and working closely together, the students of Riverhead benefit. So again, uh, regarding um, the Riverhead Township, um, the Brookhaven Township, and the Southampton Township, I do want to thank uh, all three leaders who I've engaged in wonderful conversations regarding how we could partner further and provide more opportunities for our students. Thank you. So in the revenue budget, um, we had the use of district reserves and appropriated fund balance. And I just wanted to go over some of the reserves the district has and how we will be using them. Unemployment reserve, um, we, we appropriated $150,000 this year. That revenue is actually equivalent to what's in the budget line for unemployment. And it goes dollar for dollar for that particular reserve. If we do not use that amount of money next year, we will return the balance to the reserve. So it, and this is money that is already um, in the district. There's no, no um, tax levy impact on it. ERS, we did have some, out, some um, money allocated last year but the ERS rate went down. I thought it was prudent for us not to um, use money this year for the ERS reserve, as we do have a decrease in that specific budget line. Our teacher's retirement system reserve, we are gonna use that. Um, that rate did go up specifically. So the reserves are there to help us um, manage, manage fluctuations um, in, in certain uh, line items. And our workers' compensation, based on review, this is just, um, we don't really, ex we don't expect a decrease in that budget line, but based on our needs, we're just gonna use a little less of the reserves and that will allow us to, to keep that, um, that reserve um, more intact for future years. 
overall our reserves just going down slightly, um, about um, $1,500. Our appropriated fund balance is going up 1.5 million. That is um, That amount is the amount that we're gonna be transferring to our capital fund for our, um, for our security capital project. Generally, um, you know, I, I find that best fiscal practice is to try not to increase appropriated fund balance year to year if you can, unless it's for something like this, which is a very specific and it could be considered a one time um, expenditure. So we will use this money um, from funds that would be available within at, at the end of the 21 22 school year. This would have no effect on. Um, this has no effect on the tax levy increase. So overall, our um, fund balance and reserves go up um, 1,496,464. And the majority of that is related to the increase for our security capital project. We're good? Mm -hmm. um, we really just wanted to, here to highlight, um, this is a five-year tax levy history for Riverhead Schools. As you can see, we've had um, from 20, 20, 2021 and 21, 22, we've had a 0% tax levy increase. And this year we're going in with a 1% tax levy increase. Um, this is, you know, this is very, I, I feel like the district and administration is very aware of um, the financial situations and, and hardships many people may be going through right now in these economic times. But we also are very cognizant of trying to really create a community that can be proud of its students and the education they're receiving and really trying to get the most for every dollar that we spend um, from, for, for our kids. So um, this is just a little bit of the history of, of how, you know, where we are now. And um, Dr. Tornatari? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I would say that, um, uh, again, um, we wanted to be able to balance where we could meet the needs of our students, expand the needs for our students, uh, not just with their programming, but with support staff. Um, so we have uh, psychologists and social workers. Uh, we also added a social emotional learning program through the company Rethink Ed which provides um, assistance and support for our students and for families. And that's why we really wanted to partner with them. Um, in addition to that, um, by the end of this school year, we will have our multi-tiered system of support plan submitted to the Board of Education, our technology plan, our five-year strategic plan, um, and our DEI plan as well. So we have a lot of things that we're putting into place as we're planning out for the future of the district. And by having all of these plans, it will help us so that we could take a look at the financials over the next several years and have that long-term financial planning so that we should and hopefully are able to um, have a, a more conservative tax levy increase on a year-to-year -year basis. Of course, a lot of that has to do with uh, the state aid and how much we receive each year. Um, but uh, but certainly we are cognizant of um, of all of the um, concerns that people may have over time regarding um, the uh, the economy. Uh, we certainly want to be able to provide everything we can and uh, and provide additional and grow not just restore but grow our programs and our opportunities for students. Uh, but we also have to maintain infrastructure. Uh, and ensure that we uh, keep up with our buildings um, and that we monitor and ensure that um, we always put the district in a situation where we are saving uh, funds so that we are able to provide more with our reserves uh, and certainly with our fund balance so that we're able to utilize that. But at the same time, uh, again, you know, being very, very uh, aware of uh, expenses and where those expenses go and ensuring that um, every decision is made in the best interest of children. Thank you. Okay, um, do we know, did we have any questions come in? 
I, uh, I, do, not, I don't, do not see any questions. Oh, oh, is there someone that has a question? Sorry. I can't, I don't see any. Yeah, I don't see any open questions right now. No, I don't. Um, everybody can visit our district website for additional budget information, um, voting locations. We have a great little um, spot on the website that you could click on that could, would take you if you know if you're unsure by um, putting in what your elementary school or your, that they'll tell you where to vote to vote. Um, the line by line, the three part budget is on there. Prior presentations are on there. And, um, you know, we are here to really, you know, provide any information that we can to help you make an, an educated choice on this on this budget. Um, the budget is May 17th. It'll be there is that for four schools throughout the district um, from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. And like I said, you could go onto the website just to uh, make sure that you to find out where your polling place is. And um, Dr. Pontori. Uh, so again, uh, in full transparency, we wanted to ensure that the line by line budget is on there so that any community member, uh, any resident, any taxpayer um, has the opportunity to review that. Uh, we do have that in two spots. We have it um, on one section on the website under announcements where we um, also listed the link for this presentation that we're holding virtually. We also the other night had an in-person presentation for community members who had uh, questions on the budget and wanted to meet with us in person. Uh, we have it there. We also have under uh, the Board of Education uh, tab. If you scroll down, uh, it does have additional uh, information with the budget as well. So we have it in those two places for residents. Um, but in addition to the three-part budget, the line-by-line -line budget, all of the presentations that we've given at uh, Board of Education meetings. This meeting is being recorded and is also going to be available on the website for viewing, and we will have it in English and in Spanish. Um, and um, I would encourage that um, any community member, if you have any questions, please reach out to us. I'm going to give you uh, my phone number at the district office. It is 631-369-6717. And if any community member or taxpayer um, has any questions, please give me a call. Uh, we could either speak on the phone, you could email me um, under contact us on the website. It has our email addresses as well. Um, or if somebody would like to come in um, and I could speak with you regarding any questions you have uh, about the budget. Uh, but uh, we do want to encourage for people to come out and vote. Uh, again, the voting is going to be May 17th from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m in our four um, elementary schools, our four um, uh, K through four uh, elementary schools. Uh, so at this point, we wanna thank everybody uh, who joined us for this presentation. Um, and, uh, and again, we wish you wanna wish everybody the best and uh, please come out and vote on May 17th. And again, if you have any questions, we are available uh, to answer them for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>